Okay, so first of all, I would like to do some like font check. Can too small. So tell me now. Well, it's not my like it's, it's not my screen, right? <laughs> so is it possible to It's cutting off. It's chopping off. Okay. So, is it possible to fix it, to move it up a little? It's cutting off the text. Yeah, I can, I can see it in this screen. So yeah, it's cropped, even the slides. So, can you guys do something with it? Like, move the picture right side, slightly. Okay. <coughs> and I need for the code again. I need to do the adjustments here. Okay, so I guess that this is readable, right? With some non-trivial effort. <clears throat> okay, uh, welcome back after lunch. So uh, I'm here because I would like to present uh, our like school project because our advisor was from Red Hat, so we had to go there, go here and present it. So basically, I am from a Faculty of Mathematics and Physics from Charles University, from Prague in Czech Republic. I think that next NetDevConf will be there, so we will see each other again. And I believe that this is going to be like the most high level talk here. Like, don't be scared, it's not about Java or stuff like that, but what I heard so far was pretty low level and pretty impressive about like <coughs> performance and stuff like that. Uh, this is not going to be like this. This is just about like configuration and how to make your life easier with like very comfortable con uh, configuration. So uh, what's our project about? It's basically we try to create some tool, which already exists actually in like open vSwitch and stuff like that, uh, which will be able to configure your like data center, virtual network, and stuff like that, and you know all the virtual machines, and connect them together, specify all the um, underlying topologies like VXLANs, VLANs, Geneve, or stuff like that and do it in some comfortable way <clears throat> and leverage the TC for this. So, for example, for most of the people, TC is not like very easily configurable tool, right? It's like the syntax and everything. It's slightly cumbersome. So we tried to make some like nice tool which will be easily configurable and will leverage the abilities in TC and stuff like that. So we communicate with the kernel via netlink and use all the TC stuff, obviously. So, <clears throat> okay, there is also one, like, one aim was to eliminate some running daemons from your data center 
which can or can or doesn't need to, but it can lead to um, not great reliability, right? If you have like long-running demons, it can fall down and yeah. Uh, so furthermore, we fixed some like bugs in kernel, which wasn't the original motivation, right? But we found some bugs in TC and fixed it because as we know, as far we know, uh, like this, like usage like this of TC was, is kind of unique or I don't know like how many people actually use just TC for managing their virtual network in their data center. <clears throat> so what this tool can do, well, so far we have some like basic stuff done. So you can define virtual networks, like switches, ports, uh, type of network overlays like VXLANs, VLANs, Geneve. <clears throat> uh, we obviously we super multi-tenancy and everything you basically need for like this use case. We have just stateless firewall because of contract and uh, basically we didn't have enough time to implement all the stateful stuff. Uh, we have uh, QoS and traffic shaping done. It's working pretty, uh, pretty good. And you can, well, the best thing on this project is the configuration that you can like use our domain specific language for configuration, which is pretty easy. And I will show you uh, how it looks like. Or you can use a C API via our C library, which is also kind of nice in my stand, uh, point of view. So, yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to say <clears throat> that like our tool has some inner representation of the network. So we create and we store our own network model, which is composed from like basic primitives you know from virtualization and uh, yeah. So basically we have, we <clears throat> describe uh, virtual networks, we call it nets, just these like uh, words in parentheses, these are like our names for like our sh shorthand names. Uh, okay, so uh, we, we have some virtual networks. Uh, these virtual networks can be uh, supported or the underl underlying technology can be uh, Geneve, VXLAN or VLAN. Uh, in a several forms, we will see later that what forms uh, there are. Uh, and some VID, which is the ID of the network. Then we have some physical machines, which are typically uh, your hypervisors, uh, and usually these are represented by some physical network interface. Uh, then you have virtual machines, which are the machines you would like to connect to each other, right? And they live on some physical, <clears throat> on some physical uh, machines. Uh, usually it's some tip interface if you have like container or some virtualization. Uh, Everything lives in one context. It means that the context is just a box where basically you can have several contexts for different scenarios or different customers. So this is basically uh, the top of the hierarchy. Uh, if you specify the model in LSDN, which is the name of the tool, uh, you can run the validation, which will basically check if everything, well, everything. If the networks is supposed to be like correct, if you don't have some, for example, conflicting MAC addresses or uh, IP addresses and stuff like that. If, uh, for example, <clears throat> you have uh, valid firewall rules, this can be checked. Uh, and then you can run commit, which will 
just try to apply all the uh, the whole model uh, to the kernel. So it will just generate some like TC rules and apply it. Most probably it will it will work because the validation is pretty good, but it can fail. So and uh, if it fails, then you can uh, you can describe some hooks how to behave in the case of failure. So. <clears throat> Now I will show you how to how we designed the configuration. So as I, as I said, there are two types of configurations. Uh, CAPI, where you just link your application or you create a new one with libLSDN and use just our API. There's really just a minimal of dependencies uh, just libnl for communication via netlink, and that's it. Uh, if you want to just try or just you know play with your network, you can use our domain-specific language uh, and configuration via this domain-specific language, uh, which is pretty powerful, and you can easily generally generate like a huge configurations for really like huge scenarios. <clears throat> it obviously uses the C API, so it's basically just a wrapper. Good, so I hope that now it will be possible to, to read it. Is it? Okay, uh, so <clears throat> This is the simple configuration where we have uh, one network on two physical machines, and on each machine we have like two virtual machines and two virtual networks. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, like the DSL is based on TCL, if you know TCL. And if you ever created some domain specific language over TCL, then you know that there are sometimes, um, you know, sometimes some boiler price you have to put before because you want to do some initialization. So, uh, yeah. So this is just boilerplate, and the real configuration begins here, uh, where you just say what's your underlying technology. So here we chose Geneve for the separation of networks. Uh, here we say how many virtual networks we want. So we want two virtual networks. And here we describe the physical machines. So this is physical machine, which is named A. Um, it is represented by the interface ETA0. And it has this IP address. This is the real like IP address of the uh, of the physical interface. Uh, the next line says that <clears throat> this physical, uh, physical interface is attached to both of these virtual networks. So it basically serves to both of the, of the virtual customers. And the next two lines are just specification of virtual machines address or containers address or whatever, or virtual interfaces. And yeah, so you can see that name of these interfaces are tab zero and tab one with those MAC addresses and word one uh, is part of network one and word two is part of network two. So that's it. Basically you are done with configuration of one like physical machine where two virtual machines lives. Uh, and similarly to the second physical machine, you specify again its IP address and two virtual machines <coughs> which are part of net one and net two. So <coughs> basically that's it. The end is just again, claiming local is our command for just saying that what machines you are so basically, you will run this script on every physical machine, 
which is part of this configuration. So everywhere you will run claim local, and as a parameter you will give it name of the physical machine. So for example, if I am on the physical machine A, I will run claim local A. If I am on B, I will run claim local B and run commit. So that's it. Basically, like this, you generated all the TC rules needed for virtual networking with this specification. So it was the um, DSL uh, configuration. And as I said, we have also CAPI. So this is trivial C program, which will do basically the same thing as the previous configuration file, but in a C, just with our API via our library. So as you can see that it's pretty straightforward. You will just create some context and <clears throat> then the configuration basically copies the configuration of the, uh, of the previous one. So settings, you set Geneve with some Geneve port. Uh, then you create <coughs> physical machines, machine one with LSD and FIS new and machine two. You will provide the configuration of the physical machines. So <clears throat> you will here specify the IP address physical interface and name of the machine. The same for the physical machine B. Here we create network, virtual network. We attach machines to net network. The same for network two. Attaching network two to both machines. And here creating four virtual machines. Depending on Yeah, so here we just we are just creating virtual machines, one, two, three, four, with MAC addresses and and names. Yeah, and here again, claiming local, which I described uh, before. Yeah, and we are done. Basically, this is everything you need to do for generating all the TC rules for this virtual network. Yeah. So if you compile it and run it, you will see that <coughs> we will see now that it actually works. So <clears throat> now I will show you a real example. Maybe I hope that it will work. So as you can see, we have we have pretty we have pretty nice like testing system where we like put together different parts of like tests and create some uh, configuration of the real virtual network. So for example here, I will execute test which will use VXLANs for, as underlying technology for, uh, for the simple example. Uh, basic means that we will use just like three virtual machines or four virtual machines and pink is that we will validate the functionality via pink. So if I run it, OK, it will fail. <laughs> OK. Here we go. So 
Um, <clears throat> this test uh, created three physical machines, ABC, uh, two networks, and, and uh, the configuration of virtual machines is as follows. I will show you the file because I think it's, yeah, the configuration looks like this. So we have like three, three physical machines and virtual machines configured like this. You have A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, C1, and C2, which are connected <coughs> uh, yeah, to, the, to, to, the, to the networks like this. Uh, this one, this one, and this one are connected together. And you can see that these are together and this one is separate. So if I go back, you will see that the validation via pink worked for, for virtual machines which were actually in the same network. So basically, it says that multi-tenancy works. Uh, so we are pinging from machine one to machine two, which are in the same network here. Uh, the same for machine four. But if we ping from machine one to machine three, it's unreachable. The same for machine five, because these are not in the same network. So multi-tenancy works, and like everything is configured as you uh, as you think. So now I will show you TC rules which were generated with like this configuration. So <clears throat> first of all, like these tests works uh, or uses containers and uh, namespaces. So it's not need. Is it doesn't need to like create bunch of virtual machines and stuff like that, so we use just uh, containers. So we have several uh, net namespaces here. Uh, ABC namespaces are simulation of like physical machines. So ABC are three different physical machines. And A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, and C1, C2 are virtual interfaces representing the virtual machines. So I will take a look at one physical machine in detail. So I will pick the LSD and A machine. So, <clears throat> so I will execute in LSD and A namespace uh, this command, which will show me rules for virtual machine number one, which lives in LSDN A physical machine. So <clears throat> basically this is for the traffic which goes from virtual machine one and it, won't, it can communicate with uh, with machines on the same network, right? So here we cre uh, we generated some TC networks which will handle which will handle with uh, multicasts. So you know that with zero one multicasts begin, and we used go to chains here because the logic is uh, not so simple. So <clears throat> if it's multicast, it jumps to chain one which is here, and it will just mirror like, and redirect uh, the packet to, uh, to device two, which is, which is the second virtual machine on the same physical host from the same network, so the packet has to, be go, has to go there. Next, it will send the packet to the virtual machine which is in the same network but on different physical machine. So it will use the underlying uh, VXLAN technology. 
so it will <coughs> it will uh, put met metadata in and send it to interface five, which is our like which is VXLAN interface, which will handle the traffic to the next uh, physical machine, and the same for uh, for the for another physical machine because we have like three uh, three physical machines there. So this is uh, these are the rules for one virtual machine. And now uh, let's take a look. What are the rules for LSD and I phase five, which which actually handles the traffic uh, which goes in the opposite way. And as you can see, uh, the interesting part is here uh, that it checks the ID of the VXLAN and it redirects to <clears throat> the interface which is responsible for, redir for like moving the packet further to the corresponding machine. So for VLAN 2, uh, for the virtual machine, sorry, for the virtual network with uh, VLAN ID 2, it moves to interface 6, and if you are on the network 1, it goes to the 7. Yeah, and again, this is for, this is for multicasts. So, in this manner, we basically are able to create the whole like working topology for the virtual networking and just with uh, TC, with nothing else, just with TC rules. We obviously used a uh, flower classifier, uh, which because like it's powerful and it's actually usable, unless uh, unlike U32, which is also like powerful, but use it for like more complex matching is kind of difficult. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, maybe I will conclude this example with showing showing uh, oh. number uh, showing different type of interfaces which we generate for this one particular example if we have vxlan with static configuration which means that we don't use fdb from vxlan we just manage everything on our own we have like all the all the mac addresses we know uh, what packet or what machine lives where so we can handle everything just with our like dump, with our TC rules, uh, which are uh, chained to the to the some to some dummy interface. Uh, so as you can see, that <clears throat> we have uh, in one f physical machine we have uh, two dummy interfaces, which uh, basically the number of dummy, dummy interfaces is the same as the number of virtual machines living on that physical machine, because. We need to, we need to somehow, like, use the filter and action rules, and there is also one VXLAN interface, which just, which is like one VXLAN interface per physical machine, and it obviously works like that. It sends traffic to the other physical machines. Yeah, so. That's it for the example. The next thing I would like to show you is our like GitHub page. It's if you Google GitHub LSDN, you can find like our GitHub page, which uh, is I think pretty active now because like the interesting part is here in the net model. There are all the source codes and stuff like that. So. You can take a look and send patches or anything you want. There is a uh, lot of lot of things to do. 
uh, because like the functionality, uh, a lot of functionality is missing. For example, stateful firewall uh, or like migrations without daemon. Uh, what I didn't say is that we actually have some like experimental implementation of daemon, but we think that it's actually it's actually uh, needed only for if you want to live migrate your virtual machines, and like the further steps will be um, to eliminate it and try to use some kernel facilities even for storing some more metadata needed for ex the actual migration. Yeah, we have like packages for Arch Linux, RPM and the base distribution, so it's pretty easy to install it actually, so you can try it right now. It's called LSDN. So just install the package and use the domain specific language or the C API I showed you and you can feel how it works. Yeah, so it looks like it works well. We fixed some patches even in Linux kernel we found during the project and IP root too. Uh, so yeah, any questions? Questions? So in your example here, you're using just nothing to represent the virtual machines, but you did do this for real with real hosts and real VMs. Is that right? Uh, say it again. Oh, say it again, please. So you, you've run this system with actual machines and actual virtual machines? Like this example I showed? No, not the example, but for real. Or is it only do this kind of example level? No, no, no. It uh, actually works in like... Okay, so then real virtual machines, yeah. Have you integrated any of this with orchestration systems or something well, like no, OpenStack? No, not yet, not yet. But that's the next logical step, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're integrating in libvat right now, yes? You use libvat. Li libvat is that what you're using to, uh, to create oh, the machine? Yeah, we tried to integrate with with, with libvat, right. but there are some problems with hooks, so we gave up because we didn't have time. We have like some more important stuff to do, but we can go back to it and yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, I see that you run now. It's on a single server. Is it also working on multiple servers? Yeah, yeah, this is what I said, that we had, okay. like, we had like free, in that example, we simulated basically the free physical machines, free physical servers. Yeah. So yes, so uh, the scenario is that you will create this like configuration file, SSH it to all of these fr free servers and just run it there. Okay, and if you're running in a real server, can I use SRAV virtual function for instead of? What function? Virtual functions. There will be a net device for, so. What do you mean by virtual functions? Okay, so you can use instead of a virtual interfaces, okay. a, physic, a, a virtual interface, SRIOV interface. Okay. Okay, today the SRIOV interface already also support TC. You, you see in all your pages, all the things that hardware, not, uh, hardware, mm -hmm. is off, hardware is not offloaded or something. So if you will use SRIV interface, so everything you can use to configure the forwarding of SRIOV also, because they're also using the same TC command to configure the SRIOV. That, that's today when you're using OVS offload, we're also doing it through TC. So okay, so if it supports these TC commands, then it will work. Yes, you just need to have, not to create um, a virtual interfaces. What is the at, the, at the end, the VM themselves, what are they getting, a, a VTH or? Yeah, there's, there's VT, uh, there is a VETH pair. Okay, so. In the, in the, like in this example, but you can have there anything you want. So, okay, so if, if we will we'll change the VTH to be a, a virtual function, okay, and you will have the other part of it, which is the virtual function representer, so it's supposed to work also. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, sure, but this is not like part of the project, right? You can pick any interface yeah. you want. It was just part of the presentation. But yeah, yeah, thank but you. By the way, he uses VMs. He, he uses, hello? Yeah, he uses VMs 
uh, it looks like. Right? You're using VMs, yeah, not containers. Well, uh, here I have containers. Oh, you but you, containers. you can use even VMs. It okay. doesn't matter. All right. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, I, I'm just going to cut this. You can come and talk to him. Next speaker can go up. Penalty box. Okay. For five minutes. Thanks. Okay.